So if there is a very little pinhole on the surface of the diamond, the oxide starts to grow underneath. And when you have chloride ions, the chloride ions and the temperature help that start that problem. So we, we have a, a stability problem of the electrode when the substrate is niobin. Well, let me finish by presenting you, me finish presenting you this recent uh, uh, paper that is uh, the master's dissertation of Gabriel. Uh, one problem that, that you know that we are having now is organic contamination at very low level in water of pharmaceuticals and also endocrine disruptors. Bis bisphenol A is not a pharmaceutical, it's an it's a industrial uh, chemical used in, in the production, for instance, of PVC and other plastics. And it, it may be a problem, a serious problem, because it's an endocrine disruptor and it's a very serious problem every time a, a creature is in the growth period. So, for instance, it's a big problem for babies because when uh, a being is growing, then it causes a lot of problems in the reproduction process, in the growth process. So, we investigated the degradation of bisphenol A with the diamond electrode, and here I'm showing you uh, results. What happens to the bisphenol A concentration? if we use different current densities on the diamond. As you can see, we are against the charge. The more current that you use, the larger the fraction of the current that is going to be used for unnecessary reactions, side reactions, oxygen evolution. Okay? So, you will remove, you will reach 10% of the initial concentration, but you be using more energy. The larger the charge, the more energy you're using. <coughs> and as you can see here, this was done by a method that was also part of uh, Gabriel's dissertation, an electroanalytical method to determine bisphenol A. As you can see here, we reach 10% of the initial concentration of the bisphenol A with a charge of just over one ampere hour per liter, but the removal of the organic load requires a larger charge, which means that you remove the initial molecule, but then you have the degradation products until you reach CO2. Okay? Here what we are doing is something that we always do, is comparing different electrodes. So I'm showing you here, now we are fixing the current at a high current, 30 milliamps per, per square centimeter, and as you can see, the diamond electrode is much better than the lead dioxide, and the dimensionally stable anodes, very bad behavior, not very good to remove. Uh, here I'm showing you absorbance, and here I'm showing organic load uh, or chemical oxygen demand removal. And as you can see again, the diamond electrode is much better. If you add chlorine, chloride to the solution, before the oxide electrode, very bad, lead dioxide, diamond. If we add chloride to the solution, Active chlorine helps, and the lead dioxide comes down here. And even this electrode that is very bad is also has a good performance. But you can never reach, at the times of electrodes that we used, you can never go down to 100% removal. Okay? When we compared our results with results in the literature, why did we do this? There were results in the literature but every result was in a beaker. No control, no improvement of the mass transport. Our, our Gabriel's work is the first work in the literature where we improve the mass transport. And as you can see, 
in our work for the removal of 90% of the organic load, we have a very large gain compared to other works in the literature. Very large gain. Uh, this work has just been published, is what now Elsevier has those in progress volumes. So this is the volume of the journal that will be published on the 1st of August. And Gabriel's work is, uh, is in the competition to be the cover of the journal. So this is the art that we submitted as a possible art for the cover of the journal. We don't know yet if it's going to be the cover or not, but anyway, this represents the diamond anode, the hydroxyl radicals that will attack the bisphenol A molecule and will transform it into CO2 and water. As you can see, it takes a lot of hydroxyl radicals and, and there is a, it's, th the numbers are, are real, okay? A lot of hydroxyl radicals are necessary to transform, to mineralize, as we say, one molecule into CO2 and water. I will not show you the mechanism. Wi this is from the literature. And let me finish just quickly showing you what is electro disinfection. So electro disinfection is you want to disinfect, generate disinfection chemicals, be them active chlorine or reactive oxygen species or other oxidants like peroxo disulfate. <coughs> so it's possible to, as I, I showed you, it's possible to electrolyze a solution of sodium chloride or seawater. So you're going to be generating active chlorine. The problem is, the potential problems, as I mentioned before, is you can generate carcinog carcinogenic disinfection byproducts and if you use uh, seawater you can also generate inorganic hazardous inorganic byproducts like bromate. So the best way to go is to generate reactive oxygen species. Okay and I'm not going to talk a lot about the re we already mentioned the species so here again, boron dopa diamond is a very good electrode. There are processes that are already available commercially where you buy a small cell, you couple that cell, for instance, to a swimming pool, and you have your swimming pool always with clean water and no chlorine in the water. Okay, contributions from Brazil in this area? only from Professor Ederio Bidoya in Rio Claro. And let me finish by saying that, as I showed you, electrochemistry has a lot to contribute to preserve the environment. We still need more advancements. One problem that we have, I showed you, for instance, the diamond is not stable. I didn't mention the cost, the diamond is expensive, so we need uh, materials that are stable and cost-effective, three-dimensional materials, and the other, the other uh, thing that we need is maybe to couple different technologies. For instance, couple electrochemistry with biological treatment, couple electrochemistry with photolysis, couple electrochemistry with different technologies. Well, I thank you very. Before I thank you. I would like to acknowledge the, the co-workers and I'm only acknowledging the graduate students that uh, appeared in the works that I presented. Gabriel is here, is now a, a PhD student. Uh, José Mario is doing a postdoc at uh, the University of Sao Paulo here in San Carlos. He's trying to return to our laboratory, so probably he will be back here in the next few months. Lucio Almeida, who was a PhD student supervised by Professor Nerilso, is currently in Araraquara. And Leonardo Andrade is a professor at the C Catalan campus of the Federal University of Goiás. Currently, he is the head of the department and having a, a lot of headaches because of the strike. A lot of problems, a lot of problems between students that want to have classes 
uh, teachers that are not giving classes, etc. And most of all, I would like to, to thank my research collaborators, Professor Neilson Boki, Professor Sonia Biagio, with whom I have had a very fruitful and pleasant collaboration for many years now. And thank you for your attention.